I'm pleased to welcome Bruce Dickinson. Hi. Q. Hello. Hello there. Um, I want to get into this record, but before we do, when you hit the road uh, in support of Book of Souls, you will be personally flying the band around the world. You'll be flying a Boeing 747-400 jumbo jet. It's a big, big plane. It's a big plane, yeah. How are you feeling about piloting this beast? Um, well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't anybody, you know, especially, I mean, it's a... It's such a classic aeroplane. Um, uh, you know, genuinely, uh, what are the queen of the skies, as they used to call her. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, although people have built aeroplanes that are bigger, and that's really not the point. I mean, there's only one there's only one jumbo. And, uh, you know, what they say, if it looks right, it flies right. And, yeah, yeah great aeroplane. I was thinking about, uh, you know, you hear about Prince after a concert. He'll play in a small club. <laughs> Help some unwind. You know, other oh, yes. artists might play a DJ set, and yeah. I'm thinking Bruce Dickinson is flying a plane. Is it relaxing for you? What do you get out of doing that after playing for tens of thousands of people or more? Well, it, it doesn't quite work like that because the, the, the airplane gets all the road crew put on it, gets all the equipment put on it. So by the time all that stuff actually gets from the venue, and gets put onto the pallets and gets loaded up and through security and all the rest of it. Yeah. It's probably going to be about six or seven in the morning, okay. and uh, and everybody's tucked up in bed, you know. So, uh, depending on the schedule, uh, you know, the airplane might leave sort of like midday or something the next day, and because of the the rules that govern um, airline flying, uh, because it's it's an airline operation, so it's not like a private thing Mm -hmm. you know we it's uh because of the rules that govern airline flying and and rest and things like that uh, effectively uh, we treat uh, a show as being uh, a work period as if i was a pilot so Uh, when i get back when i get back to the hotel at like midnight um rules say i I gotta have 12 hours rest before i can do anything uh, especially anything to do with an airplane so if we're leaving at 12 o'clock the next day then uh, I'm two hours out of drift because you know we, we, we you know I, I'd have to show up <clears throat> show up for work as it were at, yeah. at you know 10 or 11 o'clock whatever time the report time is so that knocks me out for those particular flights but I, I'm quite happy because I'm you know I'm, I'm going to be sort of uh, after a show uh, you, you're pretty beaten up anyway so mm-hmm. That's interesting. I never thought about that aspect of the fact that you're governed by these rules. Of oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. it's, it's like okay, you know, uh, yeah. But it really is a real airplane here, you know, guys. You know, that we that there are some rules, and you're gonna look after them. You know, go respect them. You're known as a front man of Iron Maiden, but you're also known as a Renaissance man, a pilot, a writer, a broadcaster, uh, close to Olympic level fencer. You brew I'm glad own- you said close to, <laughs> and it was a long time ago. <laughs> Journalistic accuracy yeah. here. Uh, you <clears throat> brew your own premium ale. Um, I've asked this of, of guests that are similarly have a broad range of interests. In your own assessment, is there something that you feel you are first and foremost among those things? Uh, yeah, I'm an uh, entertainer. Entertainer yeah. first and foremost. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm entertainer in sort of a broad, very broad sense, you know, mm-hmm. but... Uh, um, That's your passion, first and foremost. Yeah, I like. Um, yeah, I, 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 I like. I like. I like entertaining people, uh, and and to me, that's not a kind of a necessarily a frivolous thing. You know, uh, it's not like uh, just do, doing something sort of shallow necessarily. Um, to me, entertainment is is just as much stuff that goes on inside your head. As you know, guys doing pratfalls and and pulling funny faces and things like that. You know, so uh, to me, the the record is yeah, it's entertainment. And but to an extent, you know, flying an airplane, whilst it's it, it's it, it's a it's a diversion for you. You know, it's occupying bits of your brain, and nobody knows when you're flying an airplane, really, who's flying the airplane. I mean, I mean, if I'm, I mean, I did. 10 years of airline flying as a, a, you know, pretty anonymous guy at the front just flying the airplane. Mm -hmm. Um, But so the only people who knew what the performance was like that day were your colleagues. Yeah. You know, and you got, you know, hopefully some respect for like, yeah, you know, he's 
pretty 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 good guy you know nice guy to fly with or whatever and 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 you know re, re, pretty professional and and stuff like that and so that's your performance level i suppose mm. yeah mm. And, entertainment's the wrong word uh, performer is would be the right yeah. word but i like that because i think too many artists think of entertainer as a dirty word somehow like mm. bringing joy to people is 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 um like you said some for some reason inherently shallow yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, like I mean, that. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, Shakespeare was an entertainer. Exactly. Exactly. He was, you know, and and actors, you know, he's like, I'm an actor. Yeah, you're an entertainer. Oh, no, you're an entertainer, <laughs> dude. You know, just like it's different facet of entertainment, but you still, it's what you're doing is you are entertaining people. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to get into this record, Book of Souls. It's been five years since your last Maiden record. And from Speed of Light to Tears of a Clown to Empire of the Clouds, um, you cover a lot of ground. Mm. What were you interested in saying this time around? Oh, uh, I, I, I don't think we could uh, uh, get into uh, huge concepts. Uh, well, we didn't get into huge concepts on the album. It's uh, every song was uh, every song was was its own its own little world, and. Uh, the the two there's only two of us in the band really that, that write lyrics and myself and Steve so if Steve has generally if Steve uh, you know co-writes a song he tends to write the lyrics and unless he writes the song with me in which case I'll probably write the lyrics or we may write between us or whatever mm -hmm. but um, you know so <clears throat> you know four out of the uh, was it 10 or 11 songs you know uh, four out of them are, are, are my lyrics and the rest of them are, are, are Steve's now you know his lyrics have uh, have have changed over the years and obviously because I've been been singing them I, I've you know I, I've noticed the way that his, his use of language has started to change and uh, and the 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 more kind of personal nature uh, of of some of the subject matter has uh, has become a little bit more a, bit, a little bit more nakedness going on there. You know, Interesting, with, more with personal. Him. Well, I think so. I mean, a song. I mean, you raised uh, the song um, uh, "Tears of a Clown," and I had um, uh, no idea what the song was about when I when I sang it. You know that it was about specifically about about Robin Williams, and um, but I knew it was about something that was pretty close to. You know, what, you know, where where did all this come from? You know, because you know the words were really quite quite profound, and uh, and so I said, you know, what, what's this about, Steve? Having sung it, you know, yeah. and uh, he said, oh, it's about Robin Williams. I went, oh, uh, which w was he's not normally that specific about things. You know, he's he can be, you know, he can be quite evasive. People sort of go. Well, Oh, is this about you know the occult? Is this about you know yeah. loner? Is this about this? And you go, oh no, it's not about that. It's, it's just about uh, it's just a bloke feeling weird, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he liked to keep a bit of ambiguity in the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he came straight out with it, and I was like, mm, that's a pretty bold. Uh, that's a pretty bold topic, you know. But I think as the um, as we've been going, you know, going down the track, and yeah, you know, we're all getting older and everything, and all the rest of it. Uh, and we've um, we, we we've lost a few friends along the way. I mean, some of them quite, you know, early days, you know, back in the in the eighties, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, recently, you know, the 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 rate the rate of loss, sadly, tends to accelerate. You know, the the further down the track you go. Mm -hmm. um, and I think is you know people start to feel their own mortality a bit, and they you start to bring that into uh, into the music a little bit. And maybe it gets rid of a bit of inhibition as well. Maybe that's why he's getting more personal. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, you know, I'm, I, as I say, I mean, uh, I don't want to do too much talking about about his his words because they're his words, you know. But I, you know, I sing them, so I get I do get a. A kind of a, a vibe off them that that's mm -hmm. a little bit different on this record. Well, you just talked about your partner's evolution. Everybody seems to be remarking that Iron Iron Maiden is not just surviving; they're thriving with this record. Yeah, uh, it's getting fantastic reviews. <clears throat> um, it's been called a gargantuan emotional journey. Yeah. Well, we're kind of uh, obviously, you know, with your your prehistoric analogy, you know, we're we're sort of you know supercharged protozoa you know where <laughs> you, know, you know just apply water to this fossil and watch it grow you know um yeah um yeah with i mean 
the the trouble is when you in it sort of inhabit being in a band like Maiden, um, and you see what uh, the individual musicians are, are actually capable of when when they're just m messing around and not being recorded, and and you think, wow, there's so much more stuff that we could do. It's just a question of getting us to do it all at once in the right place at the right time, uh, it, with the right kind of feel, uh, and just capture that. And, and that's the problem is that albums don't come around that often these yeah. days, getting everybody together in one place in the right mood. Uh, and it really is down to stuff like that. You know, I mean, it's, uh, um, if you look at bands, uh, early careers, I mean, everybody from, you know, ma ma major bands, they crack out one, two, three, maybe four records, maybe in as many years or less. Mm -hmm. And, that stuff is is if they're really successful, that will be the the bedrock of the next twenty five years if they carry on there for that long. You know they'll still be playing some of those songs twenty five years later. Yeah, because that's that's it. And after that, it's extremely hard. It gets kind of exponentially hard to create that same excitement. So you either have to wait 30 years before you do a record or, you know, and, and, and something else like that. But if you want to keep doing records, um, it's very hard to come up uh, with with things that, that, that feel genuinely different. Yeah. And um, but most times it's because um, it's about an emotional state which everybody has to be in. Everybody has to lock in with an emo in, in, in sync and the sound has to be right, and everything has to be so that you can you can just play, which mm -hmm. in, in a way that sounds special, um, in a, a relaxed and sort of human way. It's it's easy to make stuff uh, kind of by numbers. Yep. It's 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 easy, but and it's and it gets easier the better you are. The the, the better the musician that you are, uh, the easier it is to make soulless rubbish music um, this sort of seven out of ten you can bang that out pretty you quickly. can bang it out you know ah, yeah, yeah 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 but you take a bunch of kids that 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 are playing right at the edge of their abilities um and and there'll be an excitement and an energy that comes off them that the the, the the old the old duffers in the in the next door studio just won't be able to replicate you know um so the the key is how do you get the old duffers in the next door studio that have got all the chops to actually uh, get those f that get the essence and the feeling and the soul back into it. I mean, in the case of somebody like the Rolling Stones, you know, they take six months to do a record. Mm -hmm. uh, go, they just keep going and keep going and keep going. And somebody says, "Yep, yeah, oh, look, yeah, that, that there's a bit of it. That moment yeah. was good, you know." Yeah. Uh, and and we don't really have that luxury. Um, I suppose we do, really. But uh, to be honest with you, I'd get bored if I was doing that. <laughs> I really would. I'd be like, "Oh, come on, guys," you know. Um, but. On this one, we we you know a little bit of jiggling around, a little bit of a change of pace, a change of attitude, a change of studio, a great studio, really comfortable um, vibe, old school vibe, old school vibe with new t all the new technology available. But you know it was all behind the curtains, so you could just pretend it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, uh, we even had a tape machines in there, had old 24-track tape machines and things, and no tape on them, but they were just there. So you could kind of look and go, ah, oh, I feel really comfy now. Yeah, I think I'm back in, like, you know, 1978, you know. And and, and that just adds to the whole atmosphere. atmosphere yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 2015, uh, a big year for you, not just this record, uh, but you were diagnosed with cancer earlier this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I understand you're cancer-free now. Uh, yes, I do hope so. If I can find a piece of wood, yeah, my head will do, you know. But uh, so, how, yeah. are you feel, how are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just bouncing, bouncing around. I mean, my, all my energy levels are uh, 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 back, you know. Uh, and um, I, you know, I've got my my flying licenses all back, my full commercial licenses back with no restrictions and, and stuff. So, um, from that point of view, it's great. I, I dropped about, uh, you know. I, dropped a couple of inches off my waist uh, which uh, whilst uh, you know it's not exactly a desirable weight loss program but you know hey I'll take any advantage I can get from the damn stuff you know um, so um, still in the process of um, doing the bringing the last of the systems back online um, okay. things, things like things like 
that you wouldn't really think about, but you know, which we take for granted, things like uh, saliva, <laughs> you know, and uh, mucous membranes, and, and things that are really good for for, for singers. Singing, yeah. Uh, but of course, because of the radiation and everything that I got given to get rid of the tumours, um, you know, they just they, they they get fried and they shut down. In my case, because I had a fantastic set of doctors, I had great equipment and great technology. Uh, the guy was like, look, you know, he said, your, um, your larynx has nothing to do with this. He said, and he said, uh, the, he said, uh, I've got a, what was the expression? He said, he said, there's a, there's a natural, pl there's a natural anatomical plane that I can shoot through that avoids your larynx. And, it, and he, I'm thinking, this guy is like, uh, this guy is like taking pot shots at my head <laughs> with a radioactive sniper's rifle, you know? Um, and I, and I said, I can see why you are an oncologist. I said, I thought, you know, it would be a terrible job because you've got to tell people a lot of bad news. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't think I could deal with that. I said, but actually, I can see that, in fact, you're a, a, like a combination between, like, Sherlock Holmes and a sniper, you know, because every one of these things is a little bit different. And, and you know, anyway, it's fascinating. Yeah, you seem to have been fascinated by the science of this, science side of this experience Yeah, well, I, 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 I was. I mean, partly yeah. because, hey, what else are you going to do for the next nine weeks, uh, you know, when they're shoving you full of chemo and, and, and zapping you? Um, and secondly, it's also, um, I want to know why it works. I want to know how it works. Because in my opinion, that helps it work. Um, because it's not just enough. I, I I went through a period at the beginning, uh, right at the beginning, when uh, you kind of feel sorry for yourself. You feel a bit miserable and gloomy. And, uh, uh, and, and you see the world a different way. You know, like, for example... You know, you'd go around and you'd sort of go, wow, oh, cute girls, mm, yeah, oh, pubs, mm, yeah, yeah, okay. And then the next thing, you know, you're diagnosed with cancer and you think, ah, oh, church, graveyard, hospital, church, graveyard, hospital, you know. And and and, 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 what, and I actually caught myself doing it. I was just right. like, what is wrong with you? Stop it. I mean, I know you can't just stop it, but you go, this is this has got to, you know, we've got to think of a different way out here. And a, a buddy of mine said to me, he said, um, a friend of his got diagnosed with something similar and uh he said there's two questions you can ask one is well why me you know why me you know and if you go on down that road it's why me poor me uh, it's all and and it's just kind of a downward spiral you can't go anywhere really uh with that uh, uh, and and the other one is oh well why not you know i mean mm. it's just like okay uh and and a why not says it's kind of random i mean there's no real reason why why me? But somebody's got to get it. And mm. it just today just happens to be me. So shall we crack on and get on with it and get rid of it with the greatest respect to this, you know, thing that's living in me? Um, I think it's time for you to go and just day by day by day, get on with it. So that was a critical pivot for you in your mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, and, and because you are in it and you have a timetable and you turn up to outpatients every day and get zapped and uh, and, uh, and you, you get a kind of a, 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 a smorgasbord of, uh, and, and, and these are the side effects that may occur. And, and so you go, hmm, it hasn't occurred yet. I ah, see, I'm beating the side effects, you know, and, and you go back and they go, you're doing very well, but you will feel worse. <laughs> and, and you say, yeah, I know, I reckon, I reckon about week five, possibly, possibly week five, you know, mm. and then all of a sudden, and it kicks in and then you sort of go, oh, I really feel miserable now. <laughs> you know, they say, yeah, okay, but you're doing great and thank you. Uh, and, uh, uh, but you come out of it. You, 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 you get out of it. And I was very lucky. I mean, I was extremely lucky. I've never smoked, because um, that again, that that's, you know, m my doc said. He said, you know, do you smoke? I went no. He said, have you ever smoked? I went no. He said, excellent. I mm. said, how? What difference does that make? He said, about twenty percent. Wow. I went twenty percent. He said, yeah, twenty percent both ways. It's twenty percent more chance that you'll get rid of it. I said, and 20% more chance it'll never come back. I went, wow. And he said, so if I get patients that, that smoke, I always try them. I said, no, wait, stop. Let's stop right there. <laughs> I said, you have people that come in here that smoke and they don't stop. He goes, no. He said, I have some people that I treat and they're smoking all the way through their treatment. 
I went, okay. <laughs> I just, I don't get that. I, I just don't get that. I'm like, I, wow, you know, uh, yeah, you know, you, you, their life, so you know, their choice. But wow. Did all these extreme things you've been through in your life, from from piloting to being the front man of this band, did did that offer some preparation for this type of experience? Um. I don't know. Uh, possibly, actually, I did think about it as a uh, you know because uh, 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 as a pilot, you know, the training goes. You know, okay, you've got an airplane. Uh, you know, you've got two engines, and one of them blows up. Well, you still got another one, and this thing happens. You think, ah, oh, I still got another one. You know, so there's always hopefully a plan B and a plan C, mm -hmm. and uh, and you make you make a plan, and then you see if it works. And and then if it doesn't work, you go back to it. let's make another plan and let's see if that works. Let's see if we're getting the outcome that we need out of this. And you keep going around this iteration yep. until you until you run out of plans <laughs> or you run out of engines. But you, know. you do have to keep a level of composure mentally and emotionally going through this yeah. protocol. Right? Yeah, yeah. And and what makes it easier is that you are undergoing a protocol. What makes it easier is that you do actually have something to do. Um, what makes it harder, what makes it hard is for other people because other people who are close to you, uh, family and, and, and friends who, who know, um, don't have anywhere to go with it because they're not in it. They're observing and they can't say anything. They can't, there's nothing really, there's nothing much they can that they do. can do. Um, yeah, they can help a little bit, but they can't do anything. You know, there's nothing they can do you know they're, they're kind of helpless um and and that was um that's that's you know that's quite that's quite rough and and also sometimes you know you say some stupid things you know like when you you know you get angry and you feel a bit sorry for yourself so the 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 only people that you can get get mad with even though it's not their fault are people close to you hmm. you know and and those are all things and you sort of go oh no you know did i say that oh i wish i hadn't said that you know and and but those are all things that you've got to go through. It's, it's a very sort of cathartic experience, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but you you come out of it, and you come out of it. You go, okay, it's we 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 we've got the all clear. So let's let's get on with life, you know, yeah. big style. And big style is coming up. Big tour, lots of playing, lots of flying, lots of flying. Big seven forty seven. Seven forty seven. Uh, I mean, you couldn't really write the script, actually. That We were talking about a 747 uh, before we even started the album because we, we, we planned to be on tour, like, right about now. And the album would have been out, like, months ago. And, uh, and I was already talking about the 747 for maybe this year. All that got put on the back burner once I got, got this, uh, got, got diagnosed. And... Uh, and then as soon as we got the all clear with the scan, which was like May, I think, sometime, you know, um, it was like, okay, yeah, I like, okay, full speed ahead. I mean, and mm. uh, they were kind of going full speed ahead on the album anyway. But in terms of the tour, it was until we'd had the scan to say, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitively gone, you know. Uh, then... Um, you know, we couldn't we, we, we couldn't push the button on on everything else, but but when we pushed the button, and I said, you know, I said, you you, it was that this 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 is like some weird movie script, isn't it? That that now n not only do you you know get rid of this cancer, but you end up touring on a seven forty seven, you know, just to say, well, take that world, you know. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's it, it it does. I must say, it it does feel pretty good for the whole. It's it's amazing for the whole vibe and this album. Mm -hmm. um, when I, uh, I'd, I'd finished the album, we'd, we'd, you know, mixed it and everything, and, and then I went to see the doc. I suspected there was something a bit weird and wobbly uh, going on for four or five weeks, and I'd chosen to not see the doctor because I wanted to finish the record first. And uh, then within two weeks of finishing the record, I was sitting in front of the oncologist and he was giving me uh, my uh, radiation schedule for January. And I'm like, wow. mm, okay. Um, but, you know, you, you, you go through that and, and, and as you're sitting there, you go, well, there's, and maybe it's the pilot in me, but you sort of go, okay, so there's, there's, uh, there's several outcomes here. You know, one is not a very good outcome, and that's probably not 
that likely. So let's not go there because there's nothing we can do to influence that mm -hmm. uh, at all right now. That's like saying one engine, sir, has exploded. You say, okay, shut the engine down. Fire's gone out. Great. The other engine might fall off. Yeah, but it's not yeah. falling off. And it's not likely to fall off unless we really screw up. So let's concentrate with all the things that might happen as a result of the other engine not working and fix those. And, of course, one of the things was that, you know, you might – come through the whole thing uh, satisfactorily, except singing. Um, and I thought, well, that's a possibility. And we won't know. We just have no idea, you know. To an extent, I still don't know. I mean, I can sing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the larynx is unaffected. He's did, guy did, the oncologist did a great job there. Um, I mean, I was not operated on. There's no nobody's cut a hole in me or done anything like that. Um, but it's just the you know the the there have been a few changes in there. The notes haven't been affected. Okay. So uh, you know I, I I've got to wait for it to heal up. But I have had a bit of a sing song. You know I mean I can you know the troopers all there. You know it's everything's you know cool. You know. Um, but the, my ENT girl was like, she, 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 have you had a go at singing? I went, yeah. She goes, mm-hmm. She goes, don't have a go too much. Give yourself another two or three months. Let it all calm down. I went, oh, I know. I hate waiting. And I said, yeah, yeah, I know. But, you know, stop, you know. She goes, maybe we have to go and send you back to vocal rehab for a month or so. I went, hey, that's cool. I never had a vocal lesson in my life. I said, I might learn something, you know. But I thought... <laughs> You know, uh, with this album, I went, I would be happy if this album, if the last thing that people heard of my singing was Empire of the Clouds. Mm. I was like, you know what? That's not a bad way to, that's not a bad way to exit stage left. And I could maybe reinvent myself as Tom Waits or something, you know. <laughs> But none of those outcomes. Uh, I'm not looking. I don't. I don't want to be reinventing myself as a Tom Waits. No. Nothing wrong with Tom Waits. Don't get me wrong. But you know, I, I, I want to be up there with Iron Maiden touring. Thank you very much. And Wild Horses are not going to stop me. Uh, and they won't stop you. Uh, you guys are going to be hitting the road, and it's going to be especially exciting, I think, to take off in that 747. It certainly will be. Day. Oh yeah, absolutely. The, the landing's even more exciting. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, yeah. Thanks so much for coming in. That was great. Thank you.